Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the book called Women Who Run With The Wolves. This is going to be the first uh, video in a series because I don't think one video summary of this book will do it justice. There's too much content in this book, too much to cover. It would be like a four hour long video. So today we're going to talk about the first or the second chapter in this book titled Blue Beard. This book is it's one of the best books I've ever read. I read a lot of books. It's what I love to do. It's my hobby. It's what half this channel is, is books. And I've read so many books, so many classic books, and I can't tell you enough how amazing this book is. I know that in a lot of my videos, I'm like, yeah, it's a good book. I'm dead serious. This is a fucking damn good book. And I am surprised that I never read it earlier. And I'm like mad at myself for not reading it earlier. The reason why I think this is a good book is because the concepts in this book will apply to absolutely everybody alive today. This is about the growth of who you become psychologically. This is about lessons that you're going to learn throughout your life no matter who you are. This is about challenges that you're going to come up against in life and stages that everybody, absolutely everybody goes through. So this book applies to everybody. It's not one or two techniques it's not a business book it's not like a nutrition book it's it's for everybody because everybody experiences the problems that are explained and addressed in this book so we're going to go through the first chapter or the second chapter and it's called bluebeard and this is a very famous fairy tale or tale and it deals with the part of ourselves that's known as the natural predator. Now within your psyche, there are many different types of beings with different motives, values. There's different characters within your psyche that have different goals and motives, okay? And the different characters are represented as characters in these stories, okay? But they are within you. I want you to understand that you have all of these things within you. You're very complicated. And every single person, no matter how well you're raised, how bomb-ass your parents were, how good your childhood was, you have a part of yourself known as the natural predator. And this is the evil part of you, okay? This is the part that literally the goal of this part of you is like mass destruction. It's a very powerful part of you. I don't want you to underestimate it. It's one of everybody's life lessons to learn how to become aware of this part of yourself and how to dismember it how to not give it power. So this is innate and it's an it's an, it's a nature that's against you. It's a force that is against you, but it is within you. It opposes positive. It is against your development and growth. It is against harmony and it, it is against you following your soul calling. It does not want you to grow. It wants you to be dead spiritually. That's the whole goal. And you have that part of you within you and Bluebeard deals with this aspect of your psyche. So I'm gonna tell you the story of Bluebeard. I'm not gonna tell it like legit exact cause I don't have like the best memory. But anyways, there's this like dude, okay? He has a blue beard, <laughs> kind of sketchy. And he's courting three sisters at the same time. These three sisters are kind of sketched out by him though because he has a blue beard and he seems a little weird. He's a little weird. They're like, the fuck, you know? But he tries to like razzle and dazzle them. He's pretty baller, he has a lot of money. So he takes them out on this like carriage ride or something. And he like showers them with, with gifts and uh, symbols of wealth. And he gives them a great time. It's just, it's fantastic. Takes them to the fair, take wherever, wherever, you know what I mean? Like in modern days, it'd be like, some dude takes you to like this bomb ass concert or um, takes you out wines and dines. He takes you on his private jet. You guys know what movie I'm talking about. And uh, you know, he's like, he seems cool. After this, the opinion, the sisters are like, well, that wasn't so bad. And they talk about how interesting and fascinating he seemed. But the older sisters are still a little bit wary of them. They're like, nah, he's still kind of sketchy. I don't know. The younger sister, however, is a little bit more open to maybe marrying this guy. So this guy pounces on this, the younger sister. He, he sees her and he's like, mm, she's down to marry. So he proposes to her and they marry and they move off to his estate or wherever, okay? And things are great for a time. Then the uh, he decides he's going to go on a trip somewhere. And the older sisters come for a visit while he's away. And he gives her a set of keys to the estate. And he's like, you can use whatever keys you like, my love. He's like, any keys you want, the money doors, the the, the club room, the home theater. <laughs> I'm making these parts up, but you know, he's like, any, any part you want, you can use these keys, okay? He's like, but you can't use this key. 
It's like some small key, apparently. You can use any key or do whatever you want with all the money you want, but you cannot use this key for whatever door that it opens. She's like, okay, cool. So then he leaves, right? And the sisters are having fun and everything, but then they find out about this key that they can't use. And the sisters are like, well, why? You know, like, what is he trying to hide? They're like, well, let's find out. Let's open the store. Let's find the door. So they go searching and they find the door that this key opens. And they open the door. And inside is fucked up shit. It's a bunch of dead women, like bodies of dead women, which were his former wives that he killed. So it's like decomposed stuff, blood, skeletons, bones, destruction, evil, you know, like, and everybody sees it. All the sisters see it and they're like, oh my fucking god. So they close the door and like get away and then the key starts to bleed after. And so the little sister is like trying to to cover to wipe the blood off desperately and she tries doing all things to stop bleeding this key from bleeding but it won't stop bleeding it just keeps bleeding and bleeding and bleeding and then the guy comes home the husband and he's like oh you know how was your time together with your sisters and um she's like yeah, it was good you know he's like i want my keys back so he gets his keys back and of course he sees the blood and then he like totally flips shit completely transforms like it's like he was like schizo or like bipolar and like the bad part of him comes up the evil and he's like bitch you open that door you are gonna die now you are gonna die okay it's time it's your turn now because you didn't listen to what i told you so now bitch you're gonna be joining my other dead wives okay and at this point the little sister is not so naive anymore and she realized that she was prey she realized that she was tricked and now she's she's kind of like she knows something that she didn't know before that she needed to learn type of thing okay and so now she's like stalling she's like please like don't do this she's like give me some time you know like i i need some time to process the fact that i'm gonna fucking die he's like fine but you have this amount of time but other but after that i'm gonna like chop your head off okay so she keeps stalling and stalling and gives her time to get her brothers to come down and save her okay and right before bluebeard takes her into the dungeon and kill her the brothers come in and they like kill him they behead him okay and the brothers save her and everything's great and happily ever after right okay so you might be thinking like when i first read this story i was like this story is so fucking weird like what the fuck right like how is the story wise but it is wise like Everything in this story, every single aspect of this story represents something. So the whole point of this story is to understand that there is a force within you that doesn't want you to be creative, that doesn't want you to follow your soul calling, that doesn't want you to progress, to grow, to be curious, to ask questions. Every single thing in this, this story symbolizes something. The big sisters represent the inner knowing, your, your wiser self, your intuition. The door represents the door to swing to your consciousness, to swing to the awareness, to your, to your growth, to the awareness, to the truth of the world, to the truth of what the fuck is actually going on. The carnage, the skeletons, the bones, they represent the death of your dreams, your hopes. The things that you let die within you in order to please this or that person, in order to fit in with your, your peer group, or maybe you got caught up with drugs and so you left your dreams to the wayside because you were caught up in pleasure chasing. And when you open that door and you see the truth of what you've done with your life, that is, is literally, it looks like dead bodies and shit. It, it looks that terrible. It really is terrible to realize that you really fucked yourself over that way. That's what that door represents and that's what the dungeon represents. The blood represents the same type of thing. The, the blood of all the dreams and aspirations you have and you're trying to wipe it off. You're trying to censor and cover up what you have done. You're trying to get rid of it, you know, clean it up, but it won't. It won't, it keeps bleeding and bleeding because it's the truth. And once you see the truth and learn the truth, you cannot get away from that truth anymore and you are permanently changed as a person. Brothers represent that inner 
fighter within yourself, the strength and the actionable part of yourself, the part of yourself that could go bitch mode and just say enough is enough, fuck this, fuck this this path of life that I'm going down, I am going to fucking be true to myself now, it's time to be true to myself now, it's time to put action and strength towards the things that are going to build up my soul and my psyche again, okay, and you know what those things are, it's different for every woman, okay, and that is what the brothers represent, the strength and the actionable part of your psyche that is within everybody too. So often this natural predator is negative thoughts, often women stop being creative or men stop being creative they give up because there are negative thoughts that they have believed that they have come to believe about themselves things like i'm not talented i'm not important i'm not educated i don't have any ideas and the author's favorite i don't have time all of these are manifestations of your inner predator, of the predator, of the part of yourself that doesn't want you to succeed. So the cure for this natural predator, a big part of it is just simply being aware of it, being aware that there's that part of yourself and not letting it take over your thoughts, stopping that in its tracks, not letting the inner predator within other people around you affect what you are going to do, affect the choices you make in your life, affect whether or not you're going to follow your dreams or not. But the author also suggests getting back into tune with your intuition, getting back into tune with listening, with hearing, with being able to want to see the truth of your life, to see the truth of what is actually going on. It's simply that and using your intuition because all of us have sensations and feelings within us that come from the soul aspect of ourselves. They come from the deep part within ourselves that knows what we are supposed to do with our lives. And it's just a matter of refining the skill to listen to it. Okay, so that's the first story that I think is super important and I want to share with you guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video about this book.